have a hundred percent ROI on this tactic. Nobody does it. But the key to building these relationships, to building your professional network is if you have a goal this year to create strong professional relationships, well then this episode is for you. I'm showing you the easiest yet most valuable place to start and you'll not only have the key to unlocking powerful networks, but also the secret sauce to turn those connections into career defining relationships. No sleazy tactics required. Welcome to the Creating Opportunities podcast. This is the place where we help smart and ambitious professionals build authentic relationships to achieve success in all areas of their lives. I am your host, Cassandra Thompson. I am a speaker, a trainer, a coach, an iced coffee lover, and I want to help you get deeper connections because yes, people are messy, but people also make life richer. So let's talk about how to build those relationships this year. Okay, so we need to start off by talking about where we make connections, and you can make connections a bunch of places. I did a whole episode on 10 places to meet new people, but today we're gonna focus on three places to start making these connections. But here's the thing, let's not make building our networks harder than it has to be. So we are going to start with the lowest hanging fruit, the easiest place to begin, and also the most valuable. So the easiest place to start, re-engage old connections, what are called dormant ties. So you may have heard of loose ties before. These are, right, not your close friends, the people you know loosely throughout the world. Dormant ties are a step beyond that. They are people that you know loosely that you've also lost contact with. So this is that old coworker from two jobs ago. This is the neighbor from a couple of years ago before you moved and you're still connected online, but you don't talk anymore. So here's the thing that's really interesting about dormant ties. A few studies were done on this idea of dormant ties showing that they are the best connections and they all revolved around taking a group of executives and saying, what is a problem you're trying to solve? Go through, list 10 people that you could reach out to and Two of them, can it was something like two can be people you're closer to, two, a couple can be loose ties, and then you need some people that are from your past. When they reached out to the people from their past, dormant ties, people that they aren't as close with anymore, those people often ended up giving the best advice, having the best connections, the best new ideas, etc. And they literally tested this of asking the executives, Hey, here's your list of 10. Who do you think is gonna give the best advice? Who are you nervous to reach out to? And they would always say, oh, the person they're closest to is gonna give the best advice. The people I know now that are in my industry are gonna give the best advice. You know, Joe Schmo at number nine or 10 that I worked with 10 years ago, I'll reach out, but I, I feel slightly uncomfortable and I don't think it's gonna be the best. Joe Schmo gave the best advice. And here's why, your dormant ties are now in new networks and probably in new areas getting new ideas for you. So the people that you feel closest with, you have a lot in common with, you might be working in the same area, the same industry, the same company even, and they know the same people, they've been reading the same things, but that person who maybe lives in a different state or does something different now, they're getting info from a totally different group than you, and they're learning about different things and can connect dots in different ways. So dormant ties are great people to reach out to because they're gonna give you a whole new set of ideas, advice, and open doors to new networks. Plus, let's just be real, those people from your past, we don't have to keep saying dormant ties like it's a drinking game, but those people from your past that you're gonna re-engage, they're probably really happy that you reached out to them. Like, I know when somebody that I haven't talked to in years reaches out to me and says, hey, I thought of you today, I would love to know what you're up to. Oh, thank you, right? So you could reach out to them for something specific or you could just say, hey, I thought of you, I know it's been a long time, but I would love to know what you're up to. If you have a couple minutes, you know, send me a text or maybe we could jump on a call. Start re-engaging those old ties. And then remember with this, this is building a relationship. So right now we're just talking about how to make that spark of connection. It needs to go past just one text message and we can talk about that more in a minute, but 
just remember right now we're talking about how do we get that initial spark going again. And I actually had a call this week with someone who would be counted as a dormant tie. When I lived in Orange County, I was doing a lot of networking, meeting a lot of people out there, and there was another woman near my age that we had very similar things we were starting to build for careers and businesses. And so we connected back then. I was on her podcast. And then, you know, 2020 happened and I moved and she had kids and life goes on, right? No one's going to judge the fact that you lost touch with these people. We didn't judge each other on it, but we moved on. I see her online. I see posts now and then. Well, it just so happens that our lives and our career decisions are sort of intersecting again. And we saw each other on LinkedIn and we're commenting on each other's posts. And she actually reached out to me to do a cal like with a Calendly link at the same time I was typing it to her. And so we got on a call this week and just caught up, heard how each other is doing, heard what we're working on and are starting to think about what are some ways that we might be able to help each other? What are some ways we could collaborate? You know, just kind of getting that ball rolling. But dormant ties are the easiest place to start. Re-engage your old network. Start there because you have some connection already, but there's also going to be like a whole new world of surprises when you talk with those people. Okay, so the next place you can start making connections is joining any sort of group with a commonality professionally. So this could be your industry association. I always love the regional level. It's cheaper and you tend to make better relationships. This could be employee resource groups at your company. Employee resource groups are amazing, right? You get to meet people based around a commonality of maybe your culture, your ethnicity, your religion, your lifestyle you're at, right? There are companies that have groups for working moms and for those taking care of aging parents. You get to meet with work people about something outside of work. And so this creates a lot of cross pollination. You learn about different areas of your company or your corporation. So associations, employee resource groups, any sort of business networking groups in town that are more than just, hey, we have mixers every week. Even Facebook groups around certain things. There are certain Facebook groups that are highly active and really helpful with one another. So these are great places to start making connections because did you hear it already? There's some sort of commonality. I don't care if that commonality is pickleball, the fact that you're working moms or that it's you're in marketing and you're joining the marketing, you know, you're joining AMA in your area. Having some sort of commonality to start off with just makes it easier to start building a connection. So again, we don't need to make this harder than it has to be. Just start getting to know people in an area that you already have an interest or you already know by showing up at that group, we have this one thing in common. Okay, now maybe there are some people that are a little bit further along in their careers or maybe are on a bigger platform than you and you would love to connect with them but you're not sure how or you don't just want to make connections with people kind of in your same area which i i think you should make those connections but i understand the need for both this third tip i'm gonna share y'all i do this all the time nobody else ever does it i know nobody else ever, ever does it or i should say never but i know i'm one of the rare few who does this because I get an insane return on this. So you need to think through whose work do you like and then connect with them. So this is why this goes with the like people kind of bigger further along than you. If there is a podcast you love listening to, if there is a book you've read that really resonated with you, if there is someone who was a guest on a podcast or something like that, that you really enjoyed what they said, reach out to those people. We, for some reason, think that those people are untouchable and they're not. Reach out to them, say, hey, I really loved when you were on this podcast and you said this, or I just finished your book and I really took away this step from it. I send messages like that on LinkedIn all the time and I've done it on Instagram too. And it is shocking the return, the return rate of like, yes, I will connect with you and messages and replies back. Now, granted, this isn't gonna be for Oprah. Adam Grant probably isn't checking to see how many people loved Hidden Potential and are connecting with him. But some of those people who are, aren't at that top, top, top echelon, the next tier down, right? Not Mel Robbins, the next tier down, 
they're gonna pay attention when you say I loved you when you were on this episode and you taught me this thing on this podcast they're gonna love it I wrote two people last week and told them how I love their book I finished a book this week and I'm going to write the author today and say I just finished your book I really love this part I'm gonna take this step from it I'm 99% sure he'll write back and the reason I'm 99% sure is because I have a hundred percent ROI on this tactic nobody does it we love the information we get online. We don't tell people we love it. So have gratitude and go straight back to that person and tell them you love it. This is, again, the spark of starting a relationship, of starting to build a connection with this person. Okay, so those are three really simple ways to start creating connections. But then how do we take it deeper? Because honestly, that first step is great, but that's nothing if there's no follow-up, right? That gets you in the door. I kind of call that initial connection like the price of admission. Like joining the association is the price of admission to be able to build a relationship. Sending that first text message to someone from your past is just cost of admission to get on the ride and start building the relationship with them. So we do those steps. How do we actually build a relationship? Well, here's the key things to know. First, start engaging with people in that group or on that text message, etc. So if it's a group, like either online or in person, we need to attend events and meet people. We can't just like sign up for the group and that's it. Go to things, meet people, get business cards or get LinkedIn connections, Instagram DMs, I don't care. Connect, follow something. For the people that you're meeting in text, like dormant ties that you email or text or LinkedIn message, start just that initial little rapport of, hey, what's up with you? Let them reply, reply back. I know this sounds really obvious, but a lot of times somebody will reply and then the person won't even reply back like, oh wow, that's really interesting, tell me more. Like that's all you have to do. So get some sort of engagement going in some way and then follow up with the person. So follow up again a, a little bit later. Maybe it's another, hey, how are things going now? Or hey, I saw this thing and I thought of you. Or you go to another meeting. But the key that we're trying to get to is a one-on-one. -on -one. To me, the whole crux of a relationship actually going deeper is when you move out of the group setting and into a one-on-one. -on -one. So whether that is online or in person, you want to work your way to a Zoom chat, a coffee chat, a lunch, something. With some people, this is going to happen a lot faster than others. You meet in your employee resource group, you really hit it off with somebody and you say, hey, would you like to have lunch together next week? I'd love to learn more about you with someone that you haven't talked to in a couple years, it could go either way. It could be like my friend and I were that we just went, hey, seems like we should get together, let's get on a Zoom, and you do it right then. Other people, you might wait a little bit. With those podcast guests that you like or those authors that you liked, you're probably gonna do a lot more engaging with them in group settings online, maybe in messages before you ask for that chat. But at some point, be brave enough to ask for it. Just do it when it feels appropriate and right for you and for them. And then after that chat, what do we do? We continue to follow up. So here's the second place people make the mistake is some people will get to the coffee. The amount of people I've had a coffee with and or a Zoom, etc. And we have that one talk and it's nice, it's pleasant. Maybe we didn't have, you know, 18 different things we could work on or help each other, whatever. It was fine, and then it just dies. The amount of those I've been in, it's really hard, or that all the follow-up has been on me is hard, but I'd rather be a caring person. So you need to be the one who still follows up and checks in down the road. So that doesn't mean you have to check in once a week. That doesn't even mean once a month. You're gonna have different relationships that go deeper with different people. But the key to building these relationships, to building your professional network is genuinely care for people and then make sure to check in with them to show that care. Do not just have a coffee once, go thank you for that information, thank you for what I learned today, and then you never talk to them again. Like we need to be caring individuals who check in with people down the road. So start with those old coworkers and colleagues, your old neighbors, friends from your 20s, whatever, college friends. Wow, I'm giving you all the options, you guys. Start with those 
old relationships that need to be reignited and then just continue on from there with groups and reaching out to people whose work you admire. After that, we need to start following up with people, trying to get to one-on-one -on -one meetings and checking in down the road. If you do those things, you are going to build deeper relationships. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I do have a whole other episode on 10 places where you can make new connections this year. I will put a card to that right here and in the show notes. And then if you are on board and going, yes, I will reach out to people, but what do I say? That's where I struggle. Well, good news, I have a free guide for you in the description box below or in the show notes. It gives you all these different messages you can use to reach out to people in all different types of scenarios. You can literally copy paste them and use them for yourself. So go grab those in the description box or show notes and I will see you in the next one. Bye.